Okay, welcome back to the morning session. So it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Toen. Yeah, and he will talk about yeah, characteristic classes of polyations in positive characteristic. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to participate to this uh, conference. And uh, I hope the sound is good. So just let me know if the, the sound is not, um, not right. Okay, so what I will talk about today is, uh, it's a part of an ongoing project with Gabriele Vizzosi, and uh, there are a couple of preprints uh, in which you can find um, many more uh, details than uh, what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to focus about on, on one aspect of um, this work is, uh, I want to extend some results on uh, characteristic classes of uh, holomorphic foliations to the setting of uh, positive characteristic. So I will start by uh, explaining what uh, uh, the, the, the two statements I want to generalize in positive characteristic and then explain how uh, it can be done using a notion of uh, Dirac foliation. So the setting is, uh, I mean, the complex setting is, uh, you start with a holomorphic manifold and you, you, you have a holomorphic foliation on it, which is a, a sub-bundle of the tangent sheaf, uh, which is stable by the Lee bracket. And uh, if you have a holomorphic vector bundle on X, it makes sense to talk about uh, the notion of a flat connection along the leaves of the foliation. So this is something where you can differentiate, section, you can differentiate a section uh, along the leaves of the, the foliation. So in another, in another words, this uh, sub-bundle uh, acts by derivations on your bundle V. And all my connections will be flat here. So nabla square is zero in an obvious sense. And uh, uh, there is this uh, famous theorem of uh, Bot that when you have such a structure, the uh, chain classes of uh, V uh, have some uh, vanishing properties. So uh, it can be stated as follows. If you take any uh, homogeneous uh, polynomial of degree D, so uh, it's a polynomial in chan classes, assuming that CI is of degree two I. And then uh, if the total degree is uh, bigger than the co-dimension of the foliation, then uh, this polynomial evaluated at the chan classes of V is zero in the Han homology. So that's, uh, uh, that's one of the statements I want to um, extend to the case of uh, varieties over a field of positive characteristic. And uh, uh, there is another one, which is a a consequence of this uh, statement, which is the specific case where V is the normal bundle of uh, the foliation uh, F. So it's the quotient bundle of uh, the tangent shift by the sub-bundle F. And uh, you just get, um, I mean, it's a standard fact that this bundle has a partial connection along the leaves. And then you get from the theorem, this uh, vanishing uh, theorem of uh, both. So this is the, the typical statements I'm aiming to um, in non-zero characteristic. And there is also an extension of this uh, in the case where the foliation uh, possibly have, has uh, singularities. Uh, so one way to state this is uh, now, suppose I start with a, a sub sheaf, a coherent sub sheaf of the tangent sheaf. And uh, I um, declare that the singular, the singular set or the singular locus of uh, this sub sheaf, or so V should be F, I guess, here, uh, is precisely the place where this sub sheaf is not a sub bundle. And then instead of a vanishing result, we have a localization result uh, stating that, this, uh, that the same polynomial, instead of just being zero in cohomology, uh, are, can be actually canonically localized along the singular subsets of the foliation. So that's, that's an extension when, when, when uh, in the case of a smooth foliation, uh, the singular locus is empty and you recover the original uh, statement. And uh, in the general case, you, you get this, uh, this refined statement that the characteristic classes uh, can be localized on the singular subset. So this is also a result I would like to generalize in a positive characteristic. And of course, the first question is, are these results uh, uh, true in characteristic uh, P? And the result is uh, no, they are not. And uh, uh, there is here a very simple example. 
which is just given by the totological foliation, which is the, the thing with only one leaf. So that's given by the full subbundle. And you take as a vector as a vector bundle, you take OP in P1, for instance, on P1. And uh, it's a standard fact that because 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 OP is the pullback of O of one by the Frobenius, uh, Cartier already observed that it has a flat connection. So uh, here, a partial connection along the leaf is just a flat connection, but of course, C1 is not uh, zero because uh, it's multiplication by P. For instance, if you look at C1 in crystalline homology. So um, when, I, when, I, when I say that I want to generalize these results in positive characteristic, there is a question, of course, of what kind of cohomology theory uh, uh, would like to use. And uh, I, I really would like to have the results in uh, a nice uh, cohomology theory. So for instance, crystalline cohomology. And this example show that um, it cannot be true. The result cannot be true in crystalline cohomology. So this uh, raises the question of, um, can we find extra conditions on the foliation or maybe on the flat bundle we are looking at uh, to ensure that uh, these vanishing results are true? And my talk is about these extra conditions. So I'm going to um, explain that uh, you can uh, a phrase an extra structure that the foliation can have, uh, ensuring that uh, the results uh, the vanishing results of bot and bomb bots are all true uh, with values in crystalline cohomology and of this uh, existence of extra uh, structures. Okay, so what's the idea behind this uh, extra condition? So um, these are not really extra conditions, these are extra structures. So uh, there is a subtle point here that uh, you need to not only have conditions, but you need to um, construct an extra structure on the situation. And you can think about it in the following way. So suppose that X is defined over a field of uh, characteristic P, a perfect field of characteristic P, and I uh, denote by W of K the ring of weak vectors of, uh, of K. And uh, I consider X now not as a scheme over K, but as a scheme over the formal spectrum of WK that I call S. And the condition I'm looking for is, um, the fact that the foliation has some form of extensions in the S direction. Um, it's not something easy to phrase without giving you the definition. So we will see this at the end of the talk, how to define exactly what it means to extend over S. But that's the idea that crystalline cohomology has something to do with extension to characteristic zero. And, uh, and, and, and thus you can think of this extra structure as some form of uh, a crystalline structure on the foliation itself. And um, maybe uh, another comment here is that if we want to say that X extends as a foliation over S, then we find immediately a technical problem is that the scheme X, if I look at it as a nest scheme is not a smooth S scheme because it's uh, you know purely vertical thing over the cross point. And then you look at the cross point in a DVR. Um, so X is not, a, is not smooth anymore over the base, but it's even worse than this. It's not even flat. And uh, so to talk about foliations of X relative to S is a complicated thing, technically speaking, because uh, we, we are not in a standard situation where X is a smooth scheme. So there is a, already a question of what are, what are differential forms of X relative to S and, and so on and so forth. So of course, the natural thing is here to replace uh, differential forms by the cotangent complex, uh, which is something, you, it, it's a complex that uh, sees the non-flat, the non-smoothness of X over S. So when X is uh, smooth over S, the cotangent complex just restricts to the sheaf of one forms. But in general, uh, it's, it's a complex of sheaves, non-vanishing of uh, higher cohomologies are related to the singularities of X as a scheme over S. So that's the first thing that we, we want to replace forms or the tangent or the tangent sheaf by uh, cotangent complexes or tangent complexes. And then of course it becomes complicated because you need to uh, express being closed by the Lie bracket or being closed by the Durham differential uh, if you work with forms to define uh, integrability of uh, uh, foliations and, and my talk is all about how to make sense of all these notions in the setting of 
a cotangent complex instead of uh, differential forms. So if you want, it's it's going to be a I'm going to present a setting uh, explaining how to deal with uh, differential calculus in the Dirac in a Dirac setting where uh, we don't only have uh, cotangent sheaves or tangent sheaves, but rather cotangent complexes and tangent complexes. Okay, so uh, as I said, we need a notion of foliation. If, if I want to say that the foliation exists over S, I need a, a notion of foliation in a very singular context uh, on non smooth schemes and even non flat over the base. And uh, there will be another aspect which is hidden in what I, I will talk about um, today is that I'm, I, I, will, I will give a notion of uh, Dirac foliation for which you can think of this as foliations by leaves which are also singular. So uh, classically, leaves of a foliation are. Uh, uh, at least locally in the analytic topology, like smooth subvariety. But this, there is also an extended notion where the foliations can have singularities themselves. And uh, uh, um, I will be typically in this kind of uh, setting. It's, it's even worse. I mean, we will be in a setting where the leaves can be non-reduced typically. Okay, so this, this was for the introduction. Now, uh, let me um, give you a vague idea of what are uh, Dirac foliations. And then I will uh, give you a more precise definition. And at the end, I will come back to the, uh, this vanishing result of a bot and bot, bot and explain how you can use this Dirac foliation to prove the vanishing statements in positive characters. So let's suppose I start with a scheme over S and uh, typically X and S won't be of characteristic zero here, but uh, we have to keep in mind we want the typical situation will be mixed characteristic situation. So S typically we, will be the formal spectrum of the periodic numbers and X will be uh, say a, 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 formal, a formal smooth scheme over S or something like this. Oh, a, a formal scheme over S that might not be smooth. And uh, a Dirac foliation on X over S will consist of two pieces of data. First, I have to give you the uh, cotangent complex of the foliation, where you want to think of this as the cotangent complex along the leaves. So these are differential forms along the leaves. But as these leaves are singular themselves, this is not a sheaf anymore, it's a complex. So I give uh, the first piece of data is a quasi coherent complex of OX modulus L. And the second piece of data is that uh, yeah, that, so L is, you have to think of it as differential forms of, along the leaves. But again, the leaves being singular tells you that this L is not just a sheaf, but it's a complex of sheaves. And the second piece of data is a differential on the symmetric algebra of L with a sheaf by one uh, that you want to think as an extension of the Durham differential of X. So uh, it, it it's a way to say that uh, these complexes of sheaves is not only uh, morally speaking the differential forms along the leaves, but it comes equipped with a notion of uh, the Ham differential that uh, makes that makes it uh, plausible to be the Durham complex of something along the leaves. Um, now these are simple ideas, but if you want to implement this in the practical on the practical uh, level, it's quite complicated, except when the characteristic is zero. And the reason is um, there is a major issue here is that you have to work with the correct uh, seam uh, uh, construction. So in characteristic zero, there are no um, uh, ambiguities about what seam means. It's just, I have a complex and I take the graded seam and I handle this with a differential. It gives me a commutative DG algebra and there is absolutely no ambiguity about what seam means. When I have a complex of say vector spaces over a field of non-zero characteristic, there are various definitions, possible versions of sim. Uh, one can be understood in a naive sense. Another one can be understood in an E infinity sense for like a, a topological approach using the E infinity operad. And there is a third version, which is this commutative simplicial algebra, where you replace your complex by a simplicial uh, vector space, take the sim level wise, and then normalize again. And uh, this is the one uh, we need. This is the one we need here uh, in this uh, setting. So it's a fact that this sim that we are talking about here will be a simplicial sim. So um, uh, again, I take my complex of uh, uh, sheaves, I replace it by a, a simplicial object of quasi-coherent sheaves, and then I take the sim level-wise, and I take normalization of this thing. 
gives me a, a new complex, which is called sim of n. Now, uh, why is this complicated? Is because the second piece of data is a differential, and this differential is typically a complex uh, type of thing. And the interaction between uh, uh, commutative simplicial algebras and uh, differential of complexes is, uh, is not easy because the, this normalization from simplicial commutative algebras to complexes uh, uh, is not well behaved with respect of symmetry, so with respect of commutativity. So it does not induce an equivalence between commutative G algebras and simplicial commutative algebras. So there is a whole bunch of uh, complicated interactions between the multiplicative structure on this sim and this extra differential we want to put on it. And uh, again, in characteristic zero, there is no ambiguity about the possible interaction between these two. It's just an extra differential satisfying the usual uh, uh, multiplicativity compatibility, so being a bi-derivation uh, or a multiplicative derivation. Uh, in this setting, you cannot phrase this uh, in, in in simple uh, manner, or at least we don't know of any simple algebraic way to phrase the compatibility between this uh, algebra structure and the differential V. So the, the, our, our solution to this uh, technical problem is to uh, represent D as a group action somewhere, and uh, to say that this simple commutative algebra has a group action. And that, that's the point of view we will, we will take. And uh, I mean, again, we. We don't know any other, um, say, more simple algebraic way to uh, express this compatibility between the, this sim and this uh, Durham differential. So it might sound what I'm going to talk about now might sound might sound a, a, a bit complicated when we keep in mind that we just want to talk about a Durham differential and some compatibility with the product. Uh, but outside of characteristic zero, we've we, we think it's necessary, or at least we don't know how to do uh, without this technique. Excuse me, Bertrand, can I ask you something simple? Sure. Can I ask? Uh, all right, so how does this depend on S, on the base? Oh, uh, it, 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 the differential D will be OS linear. So there is a, yeah, there is a- uh, not, not a structure, is it? It's a structure, it's, it's, it, it is a structure. I will give you the, okay. the size okay. definition now, but there is a S, uh, of course, appears in the definition. In the way D is assumed to be S linear. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start with uh, something that we call the graded circle. And uh, it's a group stack, uh, which is the group that, that will be, uh, for which actions will be by definition this uh, differential D. So the, I start with D of X, which is the ring of divided power over one generator. And uh, it's a Hopf algebra. And uh, with the usual Hopf structure, which is uh, the diagonal of X is X tensor one plus one tensor X. And uh, I can take its spectrum and I get uh, 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 an abelian group scheme, which uh, we did not buy care. And uh, um, the graded circle by definition is the classifying stack of care. So it's a, this, this care group scheme is an affine group scheme. It's flat over Z. Uh, but it's not a finite type, so it's a, it's a rather pathological uh, object. And so this classifying stack is not an algebraic stack in the usual sense. It's, uh, it, it's more like one of these uh, Tanakian gerb uh, that are considered by um, the lean, for instance. So it's the classifying stack of a flat group scheme, which is not a finite type. And um, it's a, it's a group scheme over spec Z, and it's possible to understand what are the fibers of the points, which gives you a better idea of what, uh, what it is. So the rational fiber, the generic point, is just the classifying stack of the additive group. So it's very simple. And uh, the um, fiber over a field of characteristic P is the classifying stack of Ker P, where Ker P is uh, the kernel of the Frobenius map on the group scheme of it vectors. So it's, uh, this KRP is a purely infinitesimal uh, group. It's a non, it's a non reduced group scheme. And it's a successive extension of the, this group alpha P, which is the kernel of the Frobenius on the additive group. In the same way that the P addict is a successive extensions of uh, Z mod P, uh, 
Uh, here you replace everywhere z mod p by this alpha p that behaves a little bit the same way and you have this uh, successive extension and take the limit and you get this way this uh, care p. This is what this care p is. Um, yeah, the, I don't have time to explain really why we uh, consider this, this guy, but this is, this is the one that works. There is a reason to uh, consider this particular uh, group stack, but um, um, I, I don't think I have time to uh, go over the details here. So why it's called the circle? It's a graded circle. So it's, it's, the circle means here that it's not too far to be the circle. And for instance, you can compute its cohomology and find it as the same cohomology groups as the circle, as the same cohomology algebra, actually. Uh, but there is a difference between uh, this graded circle and the usual circle, the topological circle is that on the level of uh, co-chains of cohomology, um, uh, these two uh, co-chains of, uh, these two E infinity algebras of co-chains are not uh, quasi-isomorphic. So to put this differently, um, the circle is not a formal space over Z. So it's E infinity algebra of cohomology is not quasi-isomorphic to its cohomology algebra. So formality in the sense of rational homotopy theory here, but over Z. So the circle is not formal over Z and this graded circle is just the formal space associated to the cohomology of the circle. So it's the formal version of the circle. And it's called graded because it has an obvious graduation. So there's an obvious um, GM action on divided power given by the uh, degree of polynomials in X, if you want. And uh, uh, it gives a graduation on this, uh, this circle. So it's not too far to be the circle. It's a degenerate version of the circle. And, uh, and in characteristic zero, the, the formula we, in the last slide, I say that the generic fiber is BGA and BGA is the rational uh, circle. So in characteristic zero, it is the rationalized uh, circle, but in characteristic Z, P it's different from the P at X circle, for instance, it's a formal version. Okay, and uh, you can actually see that this uh, graded stack is not of topological nature. So you cannot uh, obtain this by just uh, some form of completion of spaces. It's really a, an algebraic object, which is not of topological nature. Okay, so wh why is this graded circle uh, useful here? It's because its representations are uh, given, uh, gives uh, almost by definition uh, mixed complexes. So these are, uh, um, complexes together with an extra differential uh, that commutes with the original differential. So uh, you can uh, think of them as the G modules over Z of epsilon, where epsilon is of cohomological degree minus one and epsilon square equals zero. So the representation of this graded circle exactly model what uh, we want as this uh, uh, the Ham complex. So because this epsilon will play, it's the, uh, will play the, the, the role of the Ham differential. And uh, you can phrase this as an equivalence of symmetric monoidal infinity category by uh, saying that uh, representations of this uh, graded circle, which by definitions are quasi coherent sheaves on the classifying stack of the circle is the same thing as uh, mixed complexes. And this is a symmetric monoidal uh, equivalence. So the tensor product of mixed complexes on one side goes to the tensor product of uh, representations on the other side. Okay, so that's that's a good start. Um, yeah, I'll just have a comment that this is wrong if I replace the graded circle with the topological circle, but this is another story. But I'm sorry, so the difference is the, the symmetric structure, the symmetric model structure. The difference is the symmetric structure, exactly. So there is a different, if I take the usual circle, I get a different a symmetric monoidal structure on mixed complexes. Uh, so the, 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 symmet the usual, symmetric monoidal structure on mixed complexes is given by um, essentially the additive group. You know, it's uh, epsilon tensor one plus one tensor epsilon. If I take the circle, I find something more related to the multiplicative group. Uh, I don't know any simple formula, but um, um, yeah, that, that's the main difference. Mm -hmm. But like, so you just tell the underlying complexes and the question is only how epsilon acts, right? Exactly, exactly. The question is how epsilon acts on the tensor product and how is it how it is symmetric also. So you need right, right. coherences with symmetry and so on. 
Okay, so uh, this this is a hint that this uh, graded circle says something about the Hamm differential. And now uh, I want to come back to this thing that I need to have a Durham differential on some symmetric algebra, but this seem has to be understood in the semi-show setting. And one way to uh, do this is to talk about uh, graded loop spaces. So this graded circle has an action of GM, and uh, this it's given by the grading on divided powers. And I can form this semi-direct product of GM by the graded circle, let's call it H. And this is really the group we are interested in. And uh, so a representation of, of H is exactly a graded mixed complex. So it's a, com it's a mixed complex with a compatible grading. And um, I define the graded loop space of a scheme X to be uh, the space of the Dirac scheme of maps from the graded circle to X. So here, uh, let me check the next slide. So here, uh, you need to take this, uh, you know, the, the graded circle is a classifying stack of a group and I map it to a scheme. So uh, it seems that there is nothing in this mapping space because any map from a stack of the form BG to a scheme will factor through the cross moduli space of BG, which is just a point. So it seems that this uh, mapping space is just X. But uh, the important thing is, is here is that it's written derived scheme. So, it is true that the underlying scheme is just X, but there is a non-trivial Dirac structure on this mapping, mapping stack that uh, uh, is related to the fact that the cohomology of the circle is not trivial. So there is a more precise uh, statement in the next slide about what these Dirac schemes is about. And it comes equipped with an action of H, of course, because H uh, acts on the graded circle. So it does it's this, this action by rotation. And uh, so I will consider this uh, graded loop space as being equipped with their uh, act action by H. Okay, so concretely with this Dirac uh, scheme thing is, uh, I just mean that I consider X and S1 as functors from commutative rings to sets. And I consider sets as being special kind of central sets. And I then I do this uh, left can extension. So commutative rings are embedded in simple commutative rings by a ring is just a constant simple ring. And uh, I can do a left can extension. It's the canonical extension. I mean, commutative rings generate sempitual commutative rings by colimits in a way. So you just extend uh, 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 this functor by some left can extension. Okay. And uh, uh, so you, it, this X and S1 gives you two functors from sempitual commutative rings to sempitual sets. And by definition, this mapping Dirac scheme is the internal home in this uh, infinity category of functors. So uh, in terms of formulas, it sends a central commutative ring to the natural transformations between S1 Gehl and X of R tensor dash, which are two functors on central commutative rings to central sets. So that, that's the definition of uh, uh, this graded uh, loop space. Uh, so again, X is a scheme, it's a functor on commutative rings. I extend it stupidly on simple, as a functor on simple commutative rings. I do the same thing for this uh, S1 girl, and then I get two new functors on simple commutative rings to simple sets, and I take the homes between these functors. And the fact that I took the home between the left-hand ex extension is different from taking the home classically and then doing the left can extension. So that something, something new ha appears here. Uh, so th th this, this statement uh, here precisely says that uh, uh, how this Dirac structure uh, is related to the cotangent complex. So if I forget the action of H, this derived uh, loop scheme of X is uh, the shifted uh, tangent space which is given by the spectrum of this seam algebra. And this seam algebra here is precisely understood in the sense of uh, simplicial commutative rings. And this uh, complex here, LX, is the cotangent complex of X. Now, uh, what, what is nice is that we have an action of H on this uh, shifted tangent. And again, uh, 
if you remember representations of S1 Gre or H uh, corresponds to a graded mix complexes. So this action of H encodes some form of differential on this uh, shifted tangent. And uh, this is by definition what we call the Durham differential. And now, as it is an action on the Dirac scheme, Tx shifted by minus one, it has, by definition, uh, encoded in this action is the graded mixed structure, so the Durham differential, but also the algebra structure on this uh, on the scheme. So when I say that H acts on this Dirac scheme, I have everything I need. So the multiplicative structure on the scheme and the Durham differential and all possible interactions. So of course these interactions are kind of hidden in this uh, machinery, but uh, they are there somewhere. Okay, and this is a comment I, I, I put here that we don't know how to describe this structure of uh, a Dirac scheme with an action of H in, a, in simple algebraic terms. They, they, there are simple algebraic things you can extract out of it, but describing everything just using algebra or even homological algebra, I mean, we don't know. It just uh, the, we need somewhere to pass through this simple uh, machinery and go uh, use a little bit of algebraic topology. There is no, we don't know of any algebraic, uh, a few algebraic description of this. Okay. Okay, so that was the absolute thing. So X was just a scheme. Now uh, to answer your question, uh, Dima, about the base. Uh, let me start with uh, a scheme now which lives over S. And then there is a, re a relative graded loop space, which I just take the loops, so the maps from the graded circle to X that becomes trivial on the base. So that's defined by this uh, tensor product, this fiber product. And you can uh, see that this is the shifted uh, relative tangent complex now of uh, X over S. And uh, it, it comes equipped with an action of H, and this is uh, what we, uh, we we'll consider as uh, the, the, the the Durham complex of X over S will be encoded in this uh, Dirac scheme with an action of H. Okay, here is a proposition um, that tells you how this object is related to Durham cohomology. So if I take uh, this uh, Dirac loop space uh, relative to S and I look at functions on, on, on it, so by function, I really mean hyper cohomology of the shift O. And uh, it has an action of H and I can take a fixed point by H. And again, by fixed points, I really need some uh, derived version of fixed points. So it's, uh, this, uh, this is given by uh, cohomology of the group H with coefficient in uh, this uh, complex of, fun of functions. Then you can compute this and uh, find that this is given by uh, a version of relative Durham cohomology which is called uh, the hard cohomology completed with respect to the whole filtration. So that, that's something which is already in uh, Illusis thesis, where uh, there is a version of the Durham cohomology where the Durham complex is made of wedge powers of the cotangent complex instead of uh, differential forms. And um, because the wedge powers of the cotangent complex can be non-zero for arbitrary degrees, because we take a wedge power of a complex that involves some symmetric powers of the higher cohomology uh, groups, for instance. Um, so this, this, these wedge powers are, um, uh, in the, in the uh, contrary to the case of uh, the wedge powers of a vector bundle, they don't uh, vanish after a certain degree. So this is why you need this completion. And uh, uh, so you, you can extract this way a very big complex and, but you need to complete it with respect to the whole filtration uh, to get the, the, the functions on this graded loop space. So essentially it tells you that this is the Durham cohomology. Um, maybe I should add here that when X and S are characteristic zero, uh, this completed Durham uh, uh, complex actually computes uh, algebra, uh, algebraic Durham cohomology. Let's say, say that S is the spectrum of a field of characteristic zero, X is a scheme of finite type, this completed Durham cohomology is actually isomorphic to algebraic Durham cohomology in the sense of uh, like Rotendig, Hartshorn, and so on. Oh, this is what I said here. So when, when S is spec C this, and X is of finite type, this computes algebraic Durham cohomology. Okay, so I, uh, uh, now I uh, 
can define what are derived foliations on X relative to S. And the relative to S is important here. So the definition depends on the base. So if I start with a scheme over S, a derived foliation on X relative to S will consist of the uh, following data. It consists of a derived scheme F, uh, which is going to be endowed with an action of H. So H is essentially the graded circle. It has also the GM part in it. It, uh, it's, it, it has a map to uh, the graded loop space, and the map should be H equivariant. And then there, are, uh, there is one condition, is that if I forget about the H, action, uh, just remember the GM action. So as a graded uh, scheme, this uh, F is the spectrum of the symmetric algebra of some complex, uh, which is called the cotangent complex of the foliation. And this is a well-defined uh, property just because you have the GM action. So this complex LF can be completely reco recovered by just uh, take functions on F, which are of weight one. And this recovers a complex, which is this cotangent complex. So that, that, that the fact that F, when I write F is equivalent to spec of sim, that's a property. I don't need to specify such an equivalent, there is a canonical one. So you, you should think of this as saying it's a, it's a graded scheme of the form sim of some complex together with an edge action. So together with a, a, the harm differential, but it sits over this graded loop space of uh, X over S which tells you that this uh, Durham differential must be compatible with the Durham differential, the actual Durham differential uh, of X over S. So this is where the base, um, uh, to answer the mass question, uh, is involved in the definition. So there is a map from the actual Durham complex of X over S to the sim of LF shifted by one. And that's a map compatible with the Durham differential by definition. Okay, and you really want to think of this as the data of these two pieces that I mentioned at the beginning. It's a complex with an extra structure, which is this Durham uh, differential. Uh, here it's, it's made with this, uh, the, the, the definition itself used these Durham schemes, but really the, the, the forgetful functor to complexes that sends F to LF is a conservative functor. So you, it, it makes sense to think of this as just a complex with an extra structure. And this extra structure is this Durham differential, but also uh, the map from the cotangent complex of X over S to LF and all the compatibility you can think about. Okay, um, so it's a complicated definition. Uh, again, we don't know how to make it more simple. And let me, let me give very basic examples and then uh, I'll explain how you can use these to um, uh, uh, say something about this vanishing of uh, Chan classes uh, of uh, foliations I was mentioning at the beginning. So um, first, these Dirac foliations, they form an infinity category. That's related to the fact that uh, they have an underlying complexes and you know, between complexes, you have maps and homotopies between maps and homotopies between homotopies. So complexes form an infinity category. And so it's natural to uh, think that Dirac foliations form an infinity category. And uh, they, it has a finite and an initial object, uh, which are tautological foliations that um, you want to think as the tautological foliation where there is only one leaf, which is X, that corresponds to uh, the full integrable subbundle in the tangent sheaf. And there is also the extreme opposite where the leaves are just points and uh, where the, the, the subbundle defining the foliation is just zero. And uh, these are the initial and final objects. So the final object is the one with only one leaf and the initial object is the one with points as leaves. And it has also finite limits that you want to understand as if you have, for instance, uh, two foliations, the product is just intersecting the leaves together. So at a given point, you take just the intersection of the leaves passing to that point. And give, this gives you finite products and you can actually define uh, finite limits that way. So that's the two uh, tautological foliation I was mentioning. The cotangent complex can be zero. This is the zero foliation. So points are the leaves. And uh, uh, there is this other extreme, which is uh, in terms of the definition of, of the previous slides, it's F is the graded loop space itself by the identity map with the action of H. And that's the other tautological foliation where the leaves are, uh, is, there's only one leaf, which is just, uh, well, if it is over S, you want to think that the leaves are the fibers of the projection from X to S. Uh, 
Okay, and you have also pullbacks. So uh, that's a very efficient way to construct examples. If you can start with uh, basic things and take pullbacks by maps. So if I have a map from X prime to S prime to uh, X to S, so it's, it's a functionality on the scheme, but also on the base. And the functionality on the base is going to be very helpful for us uh, because we want to play with this uh, lifting to characteristic zero thing. Uh, there is a pullback functor and it satisfies some formal property. Um, like compa it's compatible with uh, composition, for instance. And uh, you can use this to define what are the integrable foliations, which are the one that you can get by pullbacks of the zero foliation. So that's, the, that's a definition of being globally integrable and uh, for which the leaves are the fibers of the map. So anything which is the pullback of the zero foliation is called a globally integrable. And, um, and then there is another uh, basic example, which that it should, of course, contains the uh, usual example of a foliation on the smooth scheme. So if X over S is smooth, uh, and if I look at uh, some bundles, so I'm going to take the differential forms point of view rather than vector fields. So some bundles of omega one, which are, uh, which defines a differential idea. Uh, so which satisfies the Frobenius integrability. Um, you can uh, show that they define canonically uh, Dirac foliation in the sense of the definition I gave you. It's not a completely obvious statement, um, but, but it can be done. And it, it seems very plausible because the, the theme of omega one shifted by one, it's just a wedge algebra, it's just a, uh, an external, it, it's just the algebra of forms omega dot. And this Durham differential, this H action is just a Durham differential. So it makes sense that you have to do all these things with this simplicial, uh, you have to play with this, uh, Normal agent functor from simplicial to complexes. So it's, a, it, it's not an obvious statement, but you can prove it. So, what you can do is start with a smooth foliation, just a standard foliation on the smooth scheme, and then have a map from any scheme to X and then pull it back. And uh, you can get that way a lot of interesting examples of uh, Dirac foliation, which are not smooth anymore because the, the map from, say, X prime to X can be very, uh, can be non smooth itself. So so the, the, the leaves of the pullback foliation will be the pullbacks of the leaves, and these can be these can have singularities, for instance. So that, that's a very efficient way to construct new examples. Start with just uh, integrable subbundles in uh, uh, omega one, and then pull back these by any map, and then do finite limits of these things, for instance. And you can generate that way a lot of uh, examples. Okay. Um, there is a, tec a technical tool. I mean, it's not a technical tool, actually. It's, it's actually a very important uh, thing is when I have a Dirac foliation, I have uh, what is called uh, Dirac Durham cohomology or uh, foliated cohomology. It's also called longitudinal cohomology. So this is um, an extension of what, um, what is very classical that when you have a foliation on the manifold, uh, you can define a, a Durham complex of forms along the leaves. And uh, the cohomology of this Durham complex is called uh, longitudinal uh, Durham cohomology or foliated cohomology. And here it can be defined in a very uh, easy way. You can just um, take uh, functions on F. So F is my Dirac foliation that lives over the graded loop space. And I, can, uh, I take a homotopy fixed point by H. So again, cohomology of H with coefficient in functions. So these are the H equivariant functions on F. And uh, when F is a tautological foliation, we already saw this statement that it recovers a uh, usual uh, Durham cohomology of X over S, but in general, it's, um, it's a pretty um, complicated object. It can be, um, uh, it's, it's, not all, it's not always clear that it is of finite dimension and so on. So it can be a rather complicated thing. And you can also define it, it naively as being take the Durham complex of X and you mode out by the differential idea defining your, foli your foliation. But of course, when you do this in this Dirac setting, this moding out is, is like a homotopy push out type of construction and uh, it's a bit complicated. Okay, so it's, this is called derived longitudinal cohomology. <clears throat> and there is an explicit form if you want to see how this complex looks like. Take the infinite product of wedge powers of the cotangent complex of the foliation. So again, LF is like forms along the leaves. Um, and I, I, I want to define a, a Durham complex, but as these wedge powers, they don't, uh, a priori, they are not zero for I uh, big, uh, I will take an infinite product instead of a direct sum. 
This is where this completed is uh, uh, hidden. And there is a differential there, which is LF is a complex, so there is a little d differential. And I uh, take a total differential with some Durham differential. That's a very big complex. Take the hypercomology of X with coefficient in this, and this by definition computes this uh, longitudinal homology. Okay, so just a warning that it's an infinite product because of this uh, Hodge completion. Okay, so that's the, well, this is a conference on Hodge theory. So that's, that's where there is a little bit of Hodge theory. Uh, at least there is a Hodge filtration. It, if you start with a, a, a Dirac foliation, what you can show is that not only you have a derived uh, longitudinal cohomology, but there is a filtration on the the Ham complex of X, whose uh, first graded piece is the this longitudinal Durham cohomology, and then you have also higher graded pieces that I will express in a min, in, a, in a minute. So this this is also very well known in the uh, setting of smooth foliations on manifolds, uh, where any, any foliation induces a filtration on the Ham cohomology and the the, the the growth zero is just this quotient the Durham complex or the Durham complex of uh, differential forms along the leaves. What is important here is that this filtration is uh, completely functorial in F and it's also multiplicative. So uh, the Durham cohomology of X is a E infinity algebra and this is a filtration of E infinity algebra. So these higher graded pieces uh, are also, the, also given by longitudinal Durham cohomology, but with coefficients. And uh, so these are, Cohomology of a, it's not always a vector bundle, it's a rather a perfect complex probably or a quasi coherent complex. So this N star is the co normal complex of the foliation. In many examples, it's a vector bundle. So I will apply this when N is a vector bundle, which means that the foliation might be singular, but the normal direction is a smooth thing. So it, it's a singular foliation, the leaves are singular, but there is a, norm, a smooth transversal uh, theory to, 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 to all the leaves. And so these higher graded pieces are given by the uh, longitudinal Durham cohomology with coefficient in uh, uh, this normal bundle. And the normal bundle is defined by as, this is a distinguished triangle that this defines this co-normal uh, complex N star. Um, I'm, yeah, maybe I will say a little bit more in the next slides about the, so, uh, this definition of the right-hand side, so the Durham cohomology along F of these wedge powers, of course, this is not always well defined for any complexes of sheaves. You need a partial connection on the sheaf along the leaves. So here there is implicitly the statement that this normal complex carries, they carry connections along the leaves. And uh, again, classically, this, is, this was observed by, by, by Bot. I think it's called the Bot connection or something like this. And it's, uh, um, it's one of the main ingredients in these uh, vanishing statements. And uh, so I will say a little bit more about this uh, partial connection along the leaves uh, now. So there is a notion. So if, you, if I start with a vector bundle or a perfect complex, it doesn't have to be a vector bundle. It, it applies to a complex of OX modules on X, a quasi coherent complex on X. I will say that E is flat along F and uh, E is flat along F is a bad terminology. It's because it's an extra data. So I should say a, a, a flat connection of on E along F consists of uh, the data of the following thing. I, the perfect complex is classified by a map from X to the stack of perfect complexes. So if X is a vector bundle, you can think of this as just a stack from X to BGLN. And then uh, you want to say that this map can be promoted to an edge equivariant map uh, 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 from the, uh, the, the foliation F itself. So if you remember F by definition is a Dirac scheme with a map to the Dirac loop space and uh, the graded loop space project to X and X is sent to perf. So I have a canonical map from F to perf and I want this map to be endowed with an, a canonical edge equivariant structure. And as uh, everything here like lives in the setting of derived schemes and derived stacks, being H equivariant is not just a property, it's actually an extra structure. It's, you have to specify equivariance um, 
uh, data on, on, on the map from F. And that, that, that's, uh, so if you prefer, it's an H equivalent perfect complexes on F, which is the pullback of a perfect complex coming from X. That's, uh, that's another way to say what's uh, a flat uh, bundle along the leaves or along, along the foliation. And it's really the idea that um, uh, E, so all the classifying map from X to path is uh, infinitesimally trivial along the, the leaves of the foliation. So the way, when I say this map from F to path is H equivariant, this H equivariance is a way to write down uh, the infinitesimal uh, triviality of the classifying map along the foliation. I mean, of course, when you apply this to tautological foliations, uh, you get back the notion of flat uh, connection. Say, if you are over a smooth scheme in characteristic zero and take E to be a vector bundle and F is a tautological foliation, this is the exact same thing as a flat connection. And uh, so now the, if you use the, um, uh, well, this, 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 is a, this is almost trivial actually. This is, this is true by definition almost. If you just, uh, it's a diagram chase thing. If um, you fix a perfect complex on X and it suppose it's flat along the affiliation and you look at the charm classes of E, which lives a priori inside the Ram homology of X over S, uh, uh, they are actually zero if you send them to the foliated cohomology or longitudinal cohomology. So another way to say is that the Chan classes lives in the first step, the first non-trivial step of this uh, filtration I was talking about. And that's, uh, I mean, this is essentially some, some form of Chan veil theory that when you have a connection along the leaves, if you write down explicitly the, the these uh, Chan classes using uh, Chan veil, then then along the leaves, these uh, different uh, the representative of these Chan classes must must vanish, so they they live in the kernel, which is the, this uh, first stage in the filtration. And uh, that's the main that that's the main point to prove the vanishing statement because the filtration is multiplicative. And now, uh, uh, if you take a high degree enough polynomials. And if you know that the filtration vanish after some point, then you get these vanishing results that uh, I mentioned at the beginning. So that that's, uh, this works fine, but here we are in the RAM cohomology. We are not in crystalline cohomology. So this is not completely over. Just, uh, we, we, we cannot just use this to uh, prove the statement in characteristic. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, just a, a slight improvement here. Not only the chunk classes are zero in this uh, foliated uh, the Ram cohomology, uh, you can prove more. You can prove that they are canonically zero in the sense that on the level of representative, you can, uh, you can pick up canonical homotopies to zero. So there are functorial way to write uh, homotopies to zero of, of these uh, chunk classes. And uh, that, so that's related to this, uh, of course, the story of uh, secondary chunk classes or secondary characteristic classes. And, and it's also related to this, uh, statement that when I say that the chunk class is localized along the singular locus to be able to pick up a canonical class that leaves the, you need this kind of statement that, uh, that you need to be able to specify canonical homotopies to zero, not just that the fact that they are zero in homology. So this proposition can be made a little bit more um, uh, functorial in this sense. Okay, so I, I have to explain how you apply all of these to the original problem of uh, vanishing of uh, characteristic classes of foliations on a uh, variety over a field of characteristic P. So I start with a perfect field and uh, W of K will be with uh, a ring of bit vectors. So K is of characteristic P here, I would say. It. And S is the formal spectrum. Uh, it can be the actual spectrum, but I think it's slightly better to work with formal schemes here. And uh, I start with a smooth algebraic variety over K, X. And I start with a uh, coherent subsheaf of differential forms that satisfies Frobenius integrability. So it's a different, it generates a differential idea. And uh, there will be a dense open subset. I mean, I assume that there is a dense open subset on which um, uh, this is a subbundle. And so it's, it does uh, define a, a foliation in the usual sense on this uh, dense open subset U. So it's not an element in X, U is a subset in X. 
and uh, I denote by Z the uh, radius complement. Just the support of the, so Z is the support of the singular locus of uh, the, the foliation. So you should think of D as a, 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 a foliation with singularities. So the singularities are precisely when D is not a, a, a sub bundle anymore. And this is where, say, if the leaves are given by the kernels of some forms, then these are the places where the, 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 the rank of these forms jump. So then uh, the, the tangent space of the leaf jump as uh, the dimension of the tangent space of the leaf jump at that point. So this uh, where the leaves become singular. So this, these are really singulars in the sense that the leaves become singular. And, um, and I did not by Q the rank of D, which is the, the co-dimension of the foliation on, the, on, the, the, on U where it's well defined. Now, uh, so here's the statement. Here's the theorem we can prove using this Dirac foliation. So now I assume that. So as I say, uh, uh, this restriction of D on U define uh, it defines a Dirac foliation over U because it's a differential ideal in a smooth. Uh, it's a subbundle which defines differential ideal in a, on, on, a, on a smooth variety. Now the extra data I will uh, impose is that this Dirac foliation F is the pullback of the refoliation of u over s. So s, again, is this uh, spectrum of uh, width vectors. So it, it sounds a little bit weird, I mean, to express. So you have a foliation of x over k, it's or u over k, sorry, it's perfectly well defined. And then you want to say it's the pullback of something that exists over s. And this is something you cannot state by staying in the smooth setting. I mean, because u is not smooth over s anymore. So you have to use the cotangent complex of u over s, which is essentially the omega 1 plus a piece of degree minus 1. And uh, so when you define this f prime, f prime cannot be a, a classical. It's not a smooth foliation in any sense. It's something which is purely derived in some sense. So, and uh, the way to think about this is really to think that the foliation comes with some kind of crystalline structure that makes it that it extends in the s direction. I make a comment a little bit later. And if you assume that such a thing exists, then actually you can prove this residue uh, theorem saying that uh, if you take a high degree enough polynomial in Chan classes, then the Chan classes of D, so D is a coherent sheaf on X, it, are, it has Chan classes in crystalline cohomology on X, then you can prove that it uh, uh, localizes uh, along the singular locus. So it's uh, the, the, these polynomials as a canonical representative as a class in local crystalline cohomology. Uh, of course, the, this class depends on F prime. This is something I don't say here, but a priori, the, this residue depends on the choice of F prime. Okay, I have two minutes to uh, give you uh, the main ingredients of the proof, and I already mentioned them, so it's going to be uh, uh, fast. The first thing is that this conormal bundle of D uh, admits a canonical connection along the foliation. And because I assume that the, con the, the foliation extends to S, this flat connection also extends as a connection over S. So that's where there is something happening that the normal bundle of the foliation not only has a flat connection, but it has some kind of crystalline structure uh, that, that deforms it in characteristic zero. And that, that's super important in the, in the argument. Now I can apply the vanishing statement of Chan classes in longitudinal the Han cohomology. Uh, so I get that the Chan classes are zero in the Han cohomology of U over S. And then the final uh, point is that there is a, a precise comparison statement between uh, derived the Han cohomology of X over S and crystalline cohomology. And uh, this is something, um, there is a canonical map from one to the other. It's not an isomorphism, but it's uh, not too bad. And, um, it's, it's already observed in Illusis thesis, and it has been uh, proved in more generality by Barget Bat. And you can see that the charm classes uh, in crystalline cohomology, they do come from classes in the harm cohomology. So if you have vanishing statements in the harm cohomology, uh, you get that way, vanishing statements in crystalline cohomology. But the important thing here is that we have the harm cohomology of X over S and not the harm cohomology of X over K. Okay, I think I'm finished. Um, there are some final comments that I don't think I have time to um, uh, say. So I'm stop here. Yeah. Thank you. 
So is there any question or comment? Yeah, I, I was wondering uh, if uh, this fil host filtration is functorial. Yes, it is. Yes. So it is functorial in, in terms if you have a, in the following sense. So if you have a map from X prime to X, uh -huh. and you have a foliation on X, and you take the pullback of the foliation on X prime, then the foliation on X defines a filtration on the RAM cohomology. The foliation of the pullback of the foliation defines a filtration on the RAM cohomology of X prime, and the pullback from the RAM cohomology of X to the RAM cohomology of X prime preserves these uh, filtrations. So it is functorial, you know, in in the sense of functorial in the foliation itself. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it it's compatible with pullbacks. So how? Does this definition behave in family? Can one talk about uh, monodromy and mixed host structure? Uh, well, it behaves well in family in the, in the sense that it's, each time you have a, that's the base thing. So if, if you have a foliation on X relative to S, then the filtration you get is on the Durham complex of X relative to S. So it's, it varies well in families. So. Uh, it, it's a it, it's a filtration. If you want, if you look at the RAM cohomology of X over S, it's a crystal on the base, and that uh, gives you uh, a filter. Of S. Of S. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's very functorial and very compatible with space change. And it's, uh, okay, thank you very much. So, any other question or comment? Okay, if not, let's thanks to yeah, Prof. Tuan again for his wonderful talks. Thank you, Bertram. Okay. So I need to teach now. I'll try to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you. Okay, bye.